For me, starting an edit is always the hardest part because you don't know what you want. You don't know what the cutting pattern is going to be. You don't know what moments you really want to focus in on. Some editors, they have it all in their head from the table read on or from the time they read the script. And for me, I need to see the footage. So I found the best thing to do is just rough together an awful version of the scene. I'll take like the last take or second to last take and just get a cutting pattern together, get a rhythm together, get an idea. And then when I go back and screen the dailies, I know what I want. Uh, I become kind of the director and the writer and the producer. I see a, t a performance that I have in the cut and I say, I got to get rid of that. And I want this, this, and this from that performance. And so for me, getting a scene together, figuring out what my cutting pattern is, figuring out what's important in the scene. And then I go back and I look for all of those things. With comedy, you play on the faces. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the first things that you learn when you're doing comedy is the jokes on camera, always. And when you watch a drama, half of what you're watching is people reacting to what somebody else is saying. It gives it more depth, it gives it more meaning, it gives it more layers. In comedies, the, the main thing is, is, is keeping it simple. And, and that sounds easy, but that actually makes it harder because you have all of these tools that you could use and they're not available in comedy because you're going to get in the way of the joke. The joke's always king and you have to work backwards off of that. It has to be funny. And, and so it's, it's a completely different approach to when you would approach a drama. In a drama, someone says, I love you. It's okay to see the person saying I love you, but I wanna see the eyes in the person they're saying I love you too. Like how do they react? How does that make them feel? What's the impact on them? Are they excited about this? Is this something that they're anxious about? And so you're playing off the person delivering the lines more, you're cutting more, just, just so that you can check in with other people and see where they're at. And when you watch a comedy, there's less cuts. You're, you're staying on the person talking, delivering the punchline, and then if you come to a reaction, you come after the punchline. And so you're not breaking up the dialogue as much. You're, you're only checking in with someone uh, you know, in a perfect world, to accent a joke, to accent a punchline. You know, in the middle, you know, you may you may check in with them every now and then because you need you need to see them. But it's not like a drama where you need to track that person so much more effectively in a drama because you need to know how they're feeling as as well. Whereas a comedy, it's delivering that punchline as clear and clean as possible. My name's Tony Orsina. I am an editor on Modern Family. I've edited pretty much everything. I've done a feature, I've done commercials, I've done web series, uh, so yeah. My process is I get the footage a day after camera and I try to deliver an editor's cut. Uh, I get my last footage Monday, I try to do it Tuesday or Wednesday. So the goal is keep pace with camera and then I like to give myself a day to just get some perspective and, and watch the cut and, and make adjustments, you know, because of the, the overall pacing and flow of the episode. And from there, the director gets two days. So by Friday, we're off to the writers. The writers usually take a day or two with it. And so then we're the following Wednesday. The showrunner at that point, you know, has a few days. We maybe do a writer's room screening. We go off to Studio Network. So, you know, I've done an episode in as little as a week and a half from, from the beginning of dailies. And, but an average one usually takes two and a half to three weeks. A lot of times when you're editing, you're, you have the vision of the writer and the director or the producer and all these other people in mind when you're you're putting your cut together. Obviously, you want to you want to do a cut that's for you, but you also need to serve all of these other masters, you know, to, to get it to where it needs to go. And what's cool with a project like Protocol is this is the time where you get to be the producer and the writer and the director, and you get to set the tone and and no and you're not going to be wrong. So it's unfettered creativity. So approaching it, you know, I would I would watch I would watch some of the dailies, and like I said earlier, I'd rough a scene together. But I would kind of I would I would make something that was interesting to me, and I would let it evolve, and I'd play with it, and you know, try some of the different tones and the different performances, and see if you can mix and match those to to create a mood that maybe was unexpected. Maybe it'll it'll add some more depths or turns, or or maybe use them as flashbacks. Uh, so, so for me, the way I would approach is I'd rough something together just to, to kind of get an idea of what I was working with, and then I'd start playing. I would say, what happens if I do this? Well, now what happens if I do this? Oh, that's cool. 
And, and, and so that's, I think, how I would approach something like that. We're not looking at how good the keys are, how good the visual effects are. Like, that's a part of it. But in the bigger picture, it's how well did you tell a story? What did you bring to this that was different from the other 99 short films that I just watched? That's what's important. That's, that's really where the focus is going to be, is your ability to tell a story in a way that's completely different than anyone else. And ultimately, the VFX and the green screen and the keying are a part of that story, but they're not essential, and they're no more or less important than any of the other tools that you need to bring that you could do with low-res footage, highly compressed, because ultimately, it's about the characters. It's about their journey. It's about their story. And that's, that's what I'm looking for, and I think the other judges are too. For me, the important thing is that you have a voice, and you, you've... You, you found an interesting and different way to tell this story than somebody else did in a consistent way. And, 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 and that's what's important, that, that you came into this project and you saw this footage that everybody else had and you found a way to make it your own. And I think for me, that's, that's the most important thing. Los Angeles Post Production Group is a great organization and I think it's wonderful that they're giving a voice for post-production, for editors, for sound designers, and that's usually we're in the background and that's okay, that's our role, but it's great that you were giving them a chance to shine and to, to be artists and to really say, this is what I bring to the process and to highlight that. And I like that it's not a members only club, that this is open to the whole world and, and that people who normally wouldn't have a voice get to have one in this competition. And so that's what's exciting and that's what drew me to the, to the, the project. LA Post Fest. Create your story and post. Hey, I can do it in Canada, eh? Yeah. LA Post Fest, eh? It's like pretty good, all right? <laughs> yeah, right. You'll do a good job. It's pretty good.